Uh, good evening. My name is Mark Dyer with Arkansas Game and Fish Commission. Uh, welcome. Uh, we're going to do a little series on knots this evening, and we're glad to have you with us. Um, Phil, uh, we don't have a whole lot of people in this evening, so uh, I'll get started here in just a little bit. We're hoping we can get just one or two more people to log in. Um, Phil, are you with us? Can you type something in the chat? Uh, while you're here, I'll be your speaker tonight. You can uh, go down to your, uh, you can go to your view bar and you can uh, click to pin me. I'll be the one doing all the demonstration and everything this evening. And uh, if you want to save anything that you do in the chat, you can go down to your chat box. You can go over to the right. There's a, a little menu down there with three dots. You can click it. And you'll be able to uh, save anything you'd like in the chat. Okay, we've got one more coming in. All right, well, I'm going to go on and get started for the evening. Um, one of the things I, uh, that is just essential when we go fishing is uh, being a person that, you know, being able to tie knots. Uh, there's nothing more frustrating than having something big on the line, having to get away from you. And tonight we're going to go over five uh, knots that I consider pretty essential in fishing. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please type them in the chat. Uh, Mr. James Davidson uh, will be addressing those. We will also get you some links. Tonight is a little bit more about exposure, not learning everything, just right off the bat. Uh, if you guys want to type in kind of what your experience level is and stuff like that in the chat, it might help me lead me in a different direction uh, since we have a smaller crowd this evening. But I will get things started here in just a minute with some knots. I'm going to switch my camera view so that we can look. Now, our first knot we're going to go over, I'll talk about it a little bit, is just our basic fisherman's knot. Uh, it is called the improved clinch knot. And I will switch us over so we can see how we tie that. I'll take this camera just a moment to focus in. I'm going to use some fly line tonight to illustrate these knots, a little higher visibility so we can see. But anyway, on our improved clinch knot, it's our very, it's a very basic fishing knot or fishing, fisherman's knot. We pass through the eye of our hook. Now, at this point, you'll see a lot of people that'll take that hook and they'll give it a spin. Uh, I really recommend against that. I prefer that you wrap your line. I'll do about five wraps. If you uh, spin that hook, it has a tendency to put some extra twists in your line. Anything you do like that can uh, can weaken that line a little bit. So we're going to take our, our uh, tag in. We're going to put it in through this loop we created right here by the hook. And then again, we have created another loop. We'll run that in through here. Now, guys, anytime we're fishing with any type of modern fishing line, any monofilament or anything like that, we want to wet this knot. You can wet your fingers, you can do whatever, and we want to pull that and let it cinch down like that. And I'll try and get you the best view of how that knot should look when we're done. Okay, I'm gonna keep that over that black background for you. Uh, if you look down in your chat, Bo, uh, or Mr. James Davidson, we call him Bo, is put a couple of links for you to follow in the chat. Those links will lead you to a website where these are laid out and animated and show you step-by-step step how to tie each one. Do we have any questions so far? I'm gonna switch back to, switch my camera view again.
Okay, well, without any questions, we will start moving forward. This may pro progress kind of rapidly this evening. Uh, our next knot that I'm going to talk about tying is one of my favorite knots to tie. Uh, it's really quick. It's really easy. Uh, it's called a Palomar knot. Uh, it's great to use with monofilament line, but if you're using anything that has a heavier braid, like you would use in a trot line or something you'd use on a limb line, those twine type lines, uh, this is probably the best knot for that because, because of the way it locks down. So I will uh, show how to tie this one real quick and we'll switch our camera views again. Like I said, any, anybody has any questions, just get them into the, the chat. All right, let me let our, let our camera focus. There we go. Okay, now when we tie our Palomar knot, one of the uh, things about it, let me get this eye where we can see it. We, we want to pass it, the line through the eye of the hook. And I want to pull a significant amount of line through there because I want to go back through the eye of the hook. I kind of like to get that where I can take that hook and kind of slide it back and forth. And then we're just going to tie a regular overhand knot, okay, with that, with that line that's been looped through there. All right, and then once we have this loop that we tied our normal overhand knot with, we want to take our lure or our hook and pass it through there. And again, uh, if we're using a monofilament type of line or whatever, we'd like to wet that line and cinch it down. If it's a braided type line, that's not necessary. Well, what we want to end up with is all of that, all of that knot on top of this hook. One of the things that's a little tricky about this knot is a lot of times that loop will slip down and get by this hole in the eyelet and that can have a, a rough edge to it and cut your line if you get a lot of tension on there. So we want to avoid that. All right, there's our Palomar knot. Now, like I said earlier, All of these knots are available on the animatednot.com and through some of the other resources uh, that we put in the chat. Um, tonight's, you know, kind of talking about what, what we want to use um, and different line types we might want to use these knots with or different situations where um, we're only going to tie them once or twice. If you guys have any questions, uh, we'll, we'll address those the best we can either through the chat or I'll talk to you about them uh, after we get done going through our series knots. Okay, well those two are our most common knots that we have for attaching our hook or our lure onto our line. One of the biggest questions we have around here is, hey, you know, when do I change my line? How do I tie that line back onto my, uh, you know, once I've emptied my spool, how do I tie my new line on? Well, there's a knot we use for that. It's called an arbor knot. Uh, Arbonaut is very simple, it's very, very effective, and it doesn't make any difference what type of fishing reel, whether you're using a spin cast, whether you're using a spinning reel, or a, we use these for fly reels as well. So to tie an Arbonaut, I'm gonna use this pin, we're gonna act like it's the arbor of our reel. Let me swap our camera over again. <laughs> we'll let it come into focus. Okay, for an arbor knot, we're going back, very, like I said, very basic, like we were before. A lot of our a lot of our knots are just a series of other knots. We're going to start off. I like to tie an overhand knot at the end of my line. So we're going to tie an overhand knot, cinch that down really well. And I'm going to take a line cutter 
and go on and trim that tag. We don't want a lot of tag in there. We don't want anything bundling up inside of our reel. So we'll make sure that's good and secure. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go up the line and this is just another overhand knot, but we're tying it around the, uh, the running end of our, or, or around the standing part of our line here. So it creates a slip knot effect. So at this point, if I had a, my spool out for like a fly rod or my spool on my spinning rod, I'd be able to just slide that over the spool and that knot will cinch itself down. And that second and that first knot that we tied will cinch off the second one. Now, a lot of people wonder about, okay, is this directional? Is it gonna pick up my line? If you'll just put a little tension on it, it really doesn't make any difference which direction it's tied in. Eventually it'll catch. And once you get one or a couple wraps around your arbor, you're good to go. So there is an arbor knot. Again, all these Are available on various different things. Guys, there's a lot of really good knot apps out there. I use one made, uh, by Columbia Sportswear. It's called What Not to Use. I think it's a one-time purchase app. I think it's a $1.99, uh, but it's very handy. I keep it on in my phone. Uh, there's some knots I tie, do fly fish. There's some knots I tie in fly fishing that I just don't use very often. So every now and then, even though I tie, even though I fish a lot, I need a little point of reference for my for my knots. All right. Well, our next knot, you know, we've we've talked about being able to tie on our lures. We've talked about being able to tie on, uh, you know, to replace our spooled line. Well, a lot of places that I fish, I like to use uh, a leader line. I might have standard monofilament on my rod, but if I'm out there tr trout fishing, uh, I may want to go to like a fluorocarbon leader or something like that. And there's multiple ways you can do that. You can put a, you can put a swivel in there and just tie a couple of uh, improved clinch knots. Or uh, another way we can do that is called a surgeon's knot. Now this is used, uh, you can use it for like using a four, you know, say you've got a six pound test monofilament and you want to go down to some type of a fluorocarbon type leader or just uh, just tip your line at the end with some fluorocarbon so you, so you have that reduced visibility in the water. Well, I'm going to use two different colors of uh, line on this one to better illustrate this knot. This is called a surgeon knot. And it is very handy instead of having to put a swivel in your line like if you're just using a spinning rod. Now a lot of times we also use this for attaching uh, tip it to our fly leader if we if our tapered leader keeps getting shorter and shorter after we've broken off retied a few times and we just want to extend the life of that leader because a lot of times they're expensive we use the same knot for that so again we'll go back to our camera here we'll let that come into focus Okay guys, now our larger diameter line, which will typically be our line coming out of our rod, we want to make a loop just like we're getting ready to tie an overhand knot. Okay? Now, we're going to do the same with our leader line or, or our tippet. and we're going to lay them on top of one another. Okay, like that. Try to get that zoomed in, let it focus a little bit. Now, you'll hear a surgeon, a surgeon knot or a triple surgeon knot, depending on how many times you'll loop these two through. 
So we'll basically go through tying an overhand knot, pull that leader through once, twice. This is a little different with this large diameter line. So everybody able to see that stuff through that camera okay? Yes. And I'm going to pull that through the third time. All right. Now with this knot, this again, we're probably using monofilament or uh, fluorocarbon right here. We're gonna we're gonna wet this knot as we cinch it down. And I'm gonna. It's a lot smaller with this large diameter line. You're like, oh my gosh, how am I gonna pass this through my line, guys? I use this thing all the time with like four pound monofilament to uh, like. 6x fluorocarbon leader when I trout fish and it will actually it gets down real small and then once we get to this point we're going to take whatever our preferred line cutter is trim those tags and I usually have no problem with that guy casting through my eyelets It's very strong. It, it, it's a knot that pulls and constricts on itself in both directions. So it, it's only going to get tighter as you pull on it, as long as it's tied properly. Okay. All right, I'm back. All right, let me trim this off. All right, there's one other knot we're going to tie tonight. Anybody who's, anybody fly fish? You guys can comment in the chat on that. If anybody fly fishes, it's a real handy knot for fly fishing. Uh, one of the better knots to learn there. Or it's also good if you're using maybe even a heavier line going down to a smaller line. Uh, it's called a perfection loop. The great thing about using loops when we uh, use our fishing line is we can go loop to loop and uh, we can change things out quickly without having any uh, hardware in there like a swivel. So, all right. Go back to our camera. And guys, when we get to the end of this, I will retie anything or talk to anybody about whatever we're going to do here. All right, but on our perfection loop, and a lot of times we are going to tie this on fly line. This is very, very common for tying our loop leaders onto our fly line if you don't have a pre-welded uh, uh, pre loop. Or if you're like some friends of mine who've seen some, some loop failure in some of their lines, they prefer to have a knot so they know that it's... That it's uh, going to be secure. So what we'll do is we'll make a little overhand loop here. And then I'm going to circle around the back side of that loop. I'm going to take this end of my line and I'm going to go in between those two loops. Whoops. And then I'm going to grab this one right here and pull it through. Now, as this knot constricts and it tightens up, we know we've got it right. We'll get it all cinched down good when that tag is sticking out just like that at a 90 degree angle. So what I can do with that again, if I take say my leader line and I'll make another perfection loop. We'll make the loop, make a pass around the back side, take our line through in between, pull the back loop through the forward loop again. We know we're right running. I'm tying these a little bit large so that you can see them. Uh, we know we're right when we're 90, 90 degrees out with that tag. Then we'll trim our tags. 
My line cutter's not wanting to cooperate. Trim tag. And then to join these, simply take your leader line, pass it through your fly line loop. Your tapered leader is going to be about nine feet. I've only got about two feet of line here, so but it's good to illustrate the point. And we'll pull it through. Let those loops kind of collapse on each other. The little knot that's actually formed right here is called a lark's head um, or lark's foot, depending on which knot guy you're talking to. And one of the cool things about this knot is when you're throwing your fly line and everything, this makes a this makes a nice hinge for everything to kind of flip over right there at the end of your fly line going out. But that's what it looks like when we've got those two perfection loops tied together. All right, guys, I know this was really kind of quick. Uh, it's like we've been going at this for about 20 minutes. I would really, if you guys have any questions, like to be able to answer those. Or maybe there's some other knots that we could uh, talk about that would help solve something that you're, that you're looking for uh, in your angling efforts. So... Uh, since there's so few of us, if you want to unmute and just ask a question, that'd be great. Sure, I, I got a couple uh, questions, okay. maybe. Sure. Um, versus the Palomar versus the improved, okay, improved clinch or sinch. Yes. Um, I mean, what? When would you use one? Is is the improved? Cinch knot, basically what I've heard called a trilene knot, is that the same? It's not the same as a trilene. It's very similar. Um, but when you when you tie an improved clinch, the great thing about it is you don't have to pass the lure through it. So if you're using like a large crankbait, uh, tying a palomar can be uh, a little on the difficult side. Anything with a bunch of treble hooks or a large lure, because the lure has to pass through that secondary loop that comes okay. through. Um, and if you're talking about, say, you're bottom fishing and you've got a swivel rig in there and you're essentially going to have three knots, one to your swivel, one to your, you know, one on either end of your swivel and one to the uh, and one to your uh, lure, you mm -hmm. can only tie two palomars there. You have to have something else because you would have to pass your whole rod and everything through that loop. So it's great. It's uh, for single hooks. It's really, really fast and really, really easy to tie. But when you start getting into larger baits, it gets a little bit more complicated with that Palomar. Um, I think it's the best uh, not hands down when it comes to tying uh, anything for trot lines, for limb lines, tying your uh, tying things onto your line for your yo-yos because with that old school uh, twisted braided line it works really well and holds better than some of the other knots with that texture aligned. Okay. I've got a couple more, but I didn't want to no. let someone else have any. <laughs> I, if anybody else wants to jump in, that's great. If not, we can just keep going. You never know. Your question may be the question they're thinking about. So, Well, I'm, I'm curious what uh, knot you like best with spinner baits since they're, you know, open, don't have a closed eye. Um, I will, I will tie pretty well, uh, an improved clinch or a, or a Palomar. If it's a, if it's a smaller bait, it's like the, like the, I use a lot, I small amount fish a lot and I use a lot of the real small ones that are like eighth ounce, uh, to three, to and three sixteenths, not quite the quarter ounce spinner baits, but they're, they've got the shorter, I'll go in and tie a Palomar on those. Um, but other than that, pretty well use improved clinch. Because I don't, when I've got a real big, when I've got a real big, if I've got three eighths ounce or even a hat with the, one of the real, with the real big blades on them or a buzz bait, I don't want to have to pass that thing through that loop on that problem one. Okay. All right. And then the last one. I, I, keep, that... I keep a lot of my fishing knots for, for just my general fishing. Very, very simple because I use so many different ones when I fly fish. Uh, we start getting into nail knots and different things like that and joining different types of line it gets a lot more complicated. So in my general fishing, I'm, I'm pretty simple. I want to, my main thing is I retie a lot and I want to be able to retie fast, efficient, yeah. you know, as quick as I can and still know mm -hmm. I've got a good knot there. 
then the last one I was going to ask is on, on leaders I had uh, in trout fishing, uh, mm-hmm. not fly fishing, just ultralight. I had a buddy show me a blood knot versus a surgeon. Yes. What's your right preference on those? Um, I have used them in fly fishing. I started using the surgeon knot because uh, when you when you tie a blood knot, it's kind of bi-directional. You, know, you have to tie the knot in both directions. It's also on animatednots.com. And it, I love that knot. It works great, but uh, the surgeon's faster in the water. Um, and that's why I use it. Well, that makes sense because it takes I've me never forever had, to do I've a never blood had a surgeon <laughs> do what? That makes sense. It takes me forever to do a blood knot. So. Right. Well, and it's like it's like tying a nail knot. People are like, oh, I have a nail knot too. I'm like, man, the only, use, the only reason I tie a nail knot is typically tying my uh, – backing to my fly line and it's like um i'm not doing that in the water i'm hoping i'm not needing to do that while i'm out Uh, that's that's a desktop thing so but uh there's another knot out there that a lot of people are using and i've had a couple friends of mine try to try to get me uh turned on to it it's actually on this uh animated knots.com it's called a fg knot and if you look at it on there, I just I just saw how how they tied it, and I, I'm a hard pass. Uh, I've got several friends that are fishing with it that trout fish with that knot. They'll run like a 10 or 15 pound light braid down to some tippet, and they they swear by it. Um, I'm still using mostly I use a lot of copolymer line when I uh, fish for trout because I use real light stuff that's on a small arbor reel. And the copolymer has less memory in it, so it doesn't have as many coils and twists, uh, which have a tendency to happen on the river. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Anybody else have anything? Well, all right, guys. I mean, we... uh, we kept it uh, nice and short and sweet tonight. We did right at 30 minutes. Um, anything uh, you've got uh, question-wise, you know, I'm still here for, but um, we'd like to thank you all for showing up to this evening and uh, being a part of this. And i uh, love to see you at any of our fishing programs uh, in the future. Uh, we'll be out with mobile aquariums and uh, out and around the state. I'd like to thank you, and I guess we'll draw this evening to a close.